Hello, so let's start and create our first macro and automate a basic task. So uh, before we do that, uh, let us understand a couple of protocols while we talk about macros. Current version of Excel which I am looking at is uh, Microsoft Excel 2010 and I am assuming that uh, you may have this but if you don't and are you currently working on 2013 awesome but if you're working on 2007 that would be good enough so uh, though nothing has much changed from 2003 as well but uh, we would recommend that either you use 2007 10 or 13 for going through these tutorials now uh, that is number one number two is when you look at the top hand um, corner uh, left hand corner you'll find that there's home insert page layout these are called as ribbons uh, for accessing macros and doing stuff within macros you require a tab here which is called as a developer tab these tabs are not present by default and hence you must get access to this by clicking here on file click here on options and you have to kind of customize this ribbon so this is basically the top is called as ribbon and you need to customize the ribbon so uh, uh, please look at the right hand side where it is written as main tabs and uh, you'll note that you know there's one which is called as a developer ribbon has been unchecked so you may have to go and check this ribbon if it is not present in your case so I've checked mark that and I'm pressing OK so the moment I do that you'll find that there's a developer tab that gets built up and this is where I can access my macros so um, you can see that under this tab there are various information which is given different kinds of icons uh, visual basic macros record macros macro security add-ins so uh, probably you know we will go through all of these one by one as and when it is needed uh, for the time being uh, please understand that this is the place where we will create our macros and automate tasks using this tab so let us now try and do a quick exercise, a very simple one, and see how these uh, automations are possible. So uh, the exercise would be something like this. Uh, why don't you type corporate bridge and uh, you know uh, give it a font size of maybe 16 and uh, bold it and uh, that's about it. And maybe you know let's say color this in red. So uh, this is what you have to do. You have to create a macro which not only uh, writes corporate bridge but also converts this into a font size of 16. It bolds it as well as color them in red color. So this is the kind of uh, exercise that we have. So let's uh, try and see how, how this works. So for doing that, you know, since I'm assuming that you are looking at this for the first time, uh, the place where you will find uh, these things to be done is the developer tab so here from the developer tab you need to click here on record macros so as you can see I mean each of the command you perform will be saved into a macro so that you can play them back again so we're talking about automation here so let's click here and see what comes in this case so as you may have noted here that the dialog box opens up this dialog box contains a couple of entries to be inputted number one is the macro name uh, by default you can see that the macro name is macro one uh, however you can choose your own set of uh, you know customized name as per your macro so let me uh, kind of put this as uh, automation for the time being now uh, this word can actually uh, specify that I'm trying to automate uh, uh, the process of formatting uh, the word called corporate bridge so uh, just taken as in a random way uh, however you one thing very important for, from the point of view of macro name is that you're not allowed to actually have spaces between the names say for example if I would have used automation space corporate space bridge and uh, had I tried to execute this command it prompts with an error and it says that uh, reasons could be many but one of them is the name contains a space or other invalid characters so uh, what this means is that a space for a macro name is not allowed second is 
that you know uh, you will find that there are other reasons as well uh, it is important to note uh, all these things because you are doing this for the first time and you may find yourself into unnecessary situations if you don't adhere to uh, these basic rules so the name does not contain with a letter or a, or an underscore and uh, basically you are not allowed to kind of have special characters in between as well so uh, let me uh, kind of delete this word corporate bridge for the time being and keep the macro name as just automation. Now the second uh, very important activity is uh, the shortcut key. So instead of you know calling the macro from the menu command uh, I'll show you how it can be done uh, but you can also make use of the shortcuts so you can actually define shortcuts for your macros so I'm sure you may have heard about control C which was for copy and control X for cut and control V for paste so we know that these are well known you know uh, shortcut keys likewise you can define your own customized uh, shortcut key for this macro so let me uh, use this Q as the shortcut key see I I may kind of not use the regular uh, you know uh, shortcuts like control C or control V because you know I may not want to interfere with uh, you know the regular set of uh, shortcuts because uh, at the end of the day these macros will actually override the actual shortcuts provided by um, by the Excel so say for example if this was named as control C uh, this macro would have been executed instead of the well-known function of copy so um, and another important thing here is that um, Excel actually differentiates between the capital C and a small c a small c is basically control plus c and if you're using capital C you can see the shortcut actually changes to control plus shift plus the C which is in your keyboard so there's a clear difference between the two so you may find yourself uh, in a situation where macro is not running because you're pressing control C however it was actually defined as capital C which meant you need to press control shift and a C from your keyboard okay so um, I'll probably you know uh, keep this as uh, Q because probably we may not have used Q as uh, some well-known shortcuts okay so uh, let's move to the third one which is store macros in there are three options actually available here one is workbook uh, the new workbook and the personal macro workbook uh, this workbook essentially means that you want to store the macro here in this workbook and you will be executing this macro in this local workbook only in this workbook uh, your macro will get executed if I open a new worksheet or sorry uh, a new workbook altogether this is book one so if I open let's say book two my macro control Q will not work okay now there's another option called new workbook new workbook essentially means that uh, you may want to kind of store this macro in a new workbook and kind of run this macro in multiple sheets and uh, and the process could be like if you choose this new workbook control Q and the macro name automation will get saved in this new workbook you may have 10 worksheets or 10 workbooks or 10 different workbooks for which you want to run this command called control Q idea here is that once you open this new workbook uh, you will be able to uh, open other set of workbooks in the same instance and execute the same macro uh, probably this comes at a, at a slightly advanced stages uh, for the time being we'll be concerned with this workbook uh, even the personal macro workbook is even beyond uh, the new workbook as such you know when we talk about personal menu commands uh, personal macros customized macros in a single workbook and you want to use it in multiple uh, uh, workbooks at different places you want to email it to your uh, clients or maybe uh, uh, to your colleagues within the firm you know probably you may want to use personal macro workbook which has higher level of customization so this all comes in actually the advanced macros but uh, for the timing we'll actually you know deal with uh, this workbook as such okay uh, what about description uh, description again um, if you are uh, uh, fancying a lot of macros let's say you know you have hundreds of macros in this workbook obviously it makes sense for you to kind of have some description associated with each macros otherwise uh, you may lose touch about you know which macro was uh, for which purpose altogether so uh, it's good to have a description so let me write a description here that you know in this formats 
a text that's it I think you know just that should be fine and uh, you just need to press OK so this is how your macro modalities are completed now the moment I press OK look at the top left hand corner it says stop recording that means you know your recording has actually started so whatever I do now this will get recorded as an instance which will enable me to do automation 